Director of Public and Governmental Affairs. Today we have with us Mark Samlick, representative from the Northeastern Wyoming, who is also the chair of the House Ag Committee. Representative Samlick, welcome and thank you for doing this with us today. I've got a few questions I'd like to ask you. Which House bill heard by the House Agricultural Committee do you think will have potentially the most impact on Farm Bureau Federation members? Well, thanks, Brett, for the opportunity to, to uh, discuss some of the things that have gone on in our House Ag Committee this year. There's two bills that I want to talk about, uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about them for very different reasons. Uh, one of them uh, has to do with House Bill 12, which we heard last Tuesday with the uh, irrigation district's change of place of use of the water. And we had a, a lot of uh, 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 irrigation district uh, people down uh, Tuesday from Torrington, and, and uh, they were very interested in, in uh, having uh, the House Ag Committee uh, kind of reconsider an opportunity for them to be able to move their water rights off of parcels of their land that has uh, been covered with subdivisions and, and that and uh, most of us on the Ag Committee uh, are, are very concerned about Tinkerith Wyoming's water law so we erred on the side of caution <clears throat> with respect to House Bill 12 and the committee uh, uh, defeated that. Uh, my uh, encouragement to that group would be that we would try to uh, follow up uh, this summer with some interim studies where we have more of all the principal players at the table. The other, uh, the other bill that I want to talk to you about for, for somewhat of a different reason, it, it has to do with House Bill 16. We also heard that the same day and we had a, a large number of people turn out to, to uh, voice their opinions concerning the, uh, uh, the state uh, uh, referendum, uh, the, state, the proposal to have a state checkoff. And I, I, I mention that not because of the significance that it might have to our producers out there in terms of adding an additional dollar uh, to, uh, to support a state checkoff program. I talk about it more because I think the agriculture community is watching us to see how the government, uh, how we react to uh, some sensitivity that they have, and some are very passionate about government involvement in their operations. I can tell you that my constituency is, is quite mixed in that area. I get uh, a lot of people encouraging me to support it, and I have a lot of constituents that are encouraging me not to. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we'll perhaps get to House Bill 16 on the, uh, on the floor on Committee of the Whole. And one of the things that we heard during the committee was, uh, during the committee hearing, was that uh, the, the beef producer would be very much interested in, in having the ability to vote on whether or not the uh, Wyoming Beef Council would go forward with a, with a beef checkoff proposal. So we will uh, present that uh, amendment on the floor, and I think we'll, we'll probably be successful in getting that on the bill. So that will allow beef producers in, in a, through the Department of Ag to initiate a referendum vote so that uh, producers will have some say about whether or not they think that that is valuable to the promotion of our beef in Wyoming and, and across the country and across the world. In your next uh, committee meeting, you'll be hearing a bill dealing with uh, very rare or uncommon areas. Would you care to explain a little bit of what that bill uh, could do to change state law? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, I have been interested in this issue and, and with the uh, assistance of Farm Bureau and, and you and uh, Ken and, and uh, your membership have all been encouraging over the last couple of years to uh, take a look at, at the uh, Environmental Quality Council's ability to uh, place that kind of a very rare and uncommon designation over lands in Wyoming, public lands, federal, state, and private lands, and, and uh, uh, being very concerned about private property rights that were careful not to abridge them, I'm, I'm, uh, I was very interested in that issue because I just think it's those types of designations cloud our titles, and, and with respect to uh, having the designation on public lands, one of the reasons that we brought this bill again this year was 
to simply try to get the, the, the uh, ability of the Environmental Equality Council appeal, uh, repealed, excuse me, so that they would not be able to do that. And I justify that action on that bill just by, uh, primarily because uh, most of our federal and state lands have managed the plans that already cover the issues that is uh, being contemplated in those types of designations. And, and uh, so we will, uh, we will see how we go with that bill. Uh, the, 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 the primary concern with that bill is that, that uh, the, the, if the lands are, are uh, designated as very rare and uncommon, it is one of the four reasons that can be used to deny mining permit. So it's a, if that does occur and a, and a mining permit is denied, that's a takings. And uh, we, uh, we have, uh, have uh, uh, in the law, in the private road hearings and also in the eminent domain statutes, a, a provision that allows for takings but with compensation. The, the uh, uh, designation very rare and uncommon is a taking and there's no provisions to provide uh, uh, compensation. So us private property rights as agricultural people look very closely at those bills and, uh, and uh, make sure there's no injury to our landowners out there. Well, Representative Assembly, thank you for all of your service to Wyoming and to agricultural in particular. And we thank you for taking time today to meet with us. And we thank you again. It's my pleasure. Thanks for asking me.